is where Tamerlan Tsarnaev feels most at home. In the boxing ring, he's dominant, imposing, successful. John Allen owns the gym where Tamerlan trained. How do you describe Tamerlan's skill as a fighter? Very good, very good. He was a proficient boxer. He was very talented. So talented, he wins the New England Golden Gloves Heavyweight Championship twice. A step closer to his dream of fighting at the international level. It was uh, his life choice to use boxing to try to get nationalized as a citizen to compete in the Olympics. But then, a sharp blow. He's barred from national competition because Tamerlan Tsarnaev is not an American citizen. That would have just been one more box for him to check off in his sense of grievance. For Tamerlan, it's a familiar message. He is an outsider. That same year, he tells a local photojournalist, I don't have a single American friend. I don't understand them. The older brother had a lot of problems. He wasn't able to assimilate to the U.S. culture like his, his little brother. His little brother, Jahar. Very well adapted, very personable, uh, very popular within his school. He seems to be doing well. He received a scholarship to go to college, talented wrestler, all those kind of things. But the rest of the Sarnaya family is struggling. The sisters with failed marriages. The parents with earning a living. They had all sorts of opportunity in this country, but by any measure, they seem to have not, you know, fulfilled certainly what their expectations were. Money is tight, and the family relies on welfare to get by. They've had what's a common experience for many Chechens, living as a kind of alienated minority in foreign societies. The family's homeland is Chechnya. Its history violent, its citizens scattered, many like the Sarnaevs living far from home and that can create issues. Issue of nationalism, Chechnya, issue of Dagestan and uh, the jihadi groups over there, issues uh, that have to do with assimilation and with the sense of belonging. Tamerlan begins to find a sense of belonging in radical Islam. He definitely started uh, to talk about religion more. He would engage with people in the gym, talk about Jewish conspiracies, and grew his beard for a while. In 2011, the FBI interviews Tamerlan and his mother after receiving a vague and unusual warning. Russian counterparts say they are adherents of radical Islam. But the case is later closed for lack of evidence. By January 2012, the parents' marriage has fallen apart like a metaphor for the whole family collapsed. It just under its own weight, under all sorts of uh, dysfunction and anger. As both parents separately move back to Dagestan, Jahar is left to fend for himself at UMass Dartmouth. While Tamerlan was becoming all devout, Jahar was still hanging out with his buds talking about girls on Facebook. On Facebook and also in his tweets, sleep after breakfast is so much sweeter. I want to study abroad or two. I'm doing laundry at this time, hashtag college. He's also smoking and dealing plenty of pot. Everybody knew this kid had, uh, you know, the kid with the funny name, he always had pot. Jahar's grades are now plummeting as brother Tamerlan takes a long trip to Dagestan. Like neighboring Chechnya, Dagestan is torn by ethnic violence and extremism. It is here that something in Tamerlan seems to click. There was something that happened during that trip. There are people that he met. There were mosques that he attended. There's training camps possibly that he went to and he probably received some training. Tamerlan seems eager to share what he's learning, emailing Jahar video links and writing, watch this, it's interesting. Or ideas, quote, those who help Allah's cause, Allah will help them. Or articles to read, like this one about Osama bin Laden's martyrdom. Six months later, when Tamerlan returns to Cambridge, he is radically different. Even among mainstream Muslims in the Cambridge area, you know, he stood out as somebody who was a little more radicalized, a little more angry. 
Brother Jahar becomes a U.S. citizen on September 11, 2012. Still, he has strong ties to his Chechen roots. It seems that the fact that both of them believe that they are from Chechnya, not to, you know, uh, the United States where they live. Jahar and Tamerlan are spending more time together and listening to radical Islamist messages. The way you should see it as a Muslim, you should see it that I'm one year closer to my death. Did I prepare myself for it? A Muslim cannot afford to waste any time. Three days before the marathon, Tamerlan and Jahar stop at this mosque to pray. Then go from worship to work out at John Allen's gym. Were you surprised at his demeanor 72 hours before those bombs got the marathon? I mean, just him entering the ring. I, I, I mean, you know, like jumping over both legs, feet at his shoulder height, right. clearing the ring, hopping in, jumping rope, like, yeah, like he was on top of the world. On top of the world and ready to act. That same week, Jahar tweets, if you have the knowledge and the inspiration, all that's left is to take action. Boston Marathon. April 15th, 2013. Marathon Monday. The two brothers take their respective positions. Set off two bombs on Boylston Street. And calmly walk away. Coming up next, Brothers on the Run. An extraordinary manhunt in the city of Boston. I actually saw the spark from the bomb and that's when I immediately hit the ground.